Hello everyone. Now we are going to see that the stresses in the beam. And again in that, first we are going to focus the bending stresses occurring in the beam. Now we know that when we act the external load on the beam, the shear force and the bending moment at each cross section cross section it occurs and this bending moment at a section suppose if i consider here a section so somewhere i will get the bending moment it will try to bend or the deflect the beam and the internal stresses resist its bending due to this applied load we will get the bending moment but the as the stress is a material property it will try to resist that bending moment and whatever that the stresses the developed that we are going to see so this is the example due to the bending how it get deflect and the corresponding bending stress which we are going to find out now we'll see one example again the simply supported beam like this similarly simply supported beam and we are applying load on this and due to application of this load this is the initial beam and due to application of this load it got deflected and when it get deflect then the upper portion it is in the compression and the lower portion is in tension right and the upper portion therefore the compressive stresses it will develop in upper side and the tensile stresses it will develop in the bottom side these stresses whatever it is developed in this due to this compression and the tension that we can call it as a bending stress but here the layer between this this is one layer right it is in between compressive zone and the tension zone where there is no any stresses it is developed means it neither elongated nor compressed so this layer it remain as it is above this layer there is a compressive stress or load uh, below that the tensile stress right so that layer we can call it as a neutral layer and the upper extreme fiber of this section right so this is the neutral axis if we move, move on towards the upper side then there is a maximum compressive stress and the uppermost fiber and if i move in downward direction that is the outermost layer below this is the maximum that is the tensile stress so this is in case of the simply supported beam now if we consider the cantilever beam the reverse thing it will happen now this is a cantilever beam and we are applying the load and it will get deflected now the upper part it is elongated so here it is the tensile stress you will get and at the bottom side it is the compressive side so here we will get the neutral axis so above that that is the tensile stress and below that the compressive stress and these stresses we are going to find out in this bending stresses now we will see consider a prismatic beam when equal and opposite moments m and m prime are applied as shown the ends of the beam bent upwards fibers at a certain position called the neutral axis do not change in length while fibers above it shorten and fibers below it elongate for linearly elastic beams this neutral axis passes through the centroid of the cross section and when the beam is bent forms an arc of radius rho we describe the position of a fiber by its distance y from the neutral axis the amount of stretching or shortening in a fiber depends on its y value y coordinates above the neutral axis are positive and below it negative the next 
will see the pure bending or even sometimes we can call it a simple bending so what it is if the portion of the beam if the portion of the beam is subjected to the constant bending right in the beam if there is a constant bending moment only and there is no shear force right then that portion of the beam is called as the pure bending means within that fixed length of the beam there is only the bending moment and that bending moment it remains constant and in that portion there is no any shear force means shear force is zero that we can call it as a pure bending or simply bending now see this is one simply supported beam having length l two load we are applying at point c from end a and at point d from end b at a distance a now when we draw the shear force diagram we will get like this as there is a point load that moves in upward direction in between there is no load horizontal and again it comes in downward direction now in between there is no load as here is zero therefore again we move in horizontal direction and there is a point load in downward direction and in between no load horizontal and again move in upward direction so this is the shear force diagram for this given load condition and if we calculate the calculation of the bending moment and if we plot then here we will get the bending moment diagram now see as per the definition what it is there is no any shear force now if we consider the section from the c to d there is no any shear force the shear force is zero and from section this is the c to this d right the bending moment it is constant right so for that we can say this up c to d there is only pure bending or the simple bending now we will see few assumptions which are made in the theory of the simple or the pure bending first as usual that we always consider that the material is homogeneous and isotropic here also we will consider it is homogeneous and the isotropic the second one the beam material stretch is within elastic limit right the elastic limit and it should obey the hooke's law beyond elastic limit we cannot use this and that is not valid for this uh, theory of pure bending the third the transverse section which were plain before the bending it remains plain even after bending also fourth one the beam is initially straight and all longitudinal filament bent into the circular arc with a common center of curvature means this is the beam and if we apply the load it will bend like this and whatever this the arc you will get at common some center so this is the radius r so it will bend like this so it is having some common radius so that is what a bent into the circular r with some common center the fourth each layer of the beam is free to expand or the contract freely of the layer below or above it means if i consider this as a beam and there are different number of layers it exists and due to application of this it will get bent like this so somewhere upper side compressive and the tensile here means this each layer is free to expand freely so that is what the assumption the value of hanks modulus it remains same in the tension and the compression it should not change right that is the assumption the next one the beam subjected to pure bending moment that is the effect of shear stress is totally neglected see as the one layer it moves to the another adjacent to that so their shear stress it takes but here as we are dealing with the pure bending that shear stress which it occurs that we are neglecting 
सो दीज आर दी फ्यू अजम्पन्स विच आर मेड इन थेरी ऑफ प्योर